Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earth Master out here, still alive. I'm just trying to get over this little cold or bronchitis that I've got, but my voice is starting to come back. Thursday night, November 7th, 2024 is the date, 10, 19 p.m. California time. Latest activity shows some movement here with a swarm of activity across the area just outside the Himalayas. Let's go ahead and check out the USGS map here where they're not showing anything. So it's going to be roughly around this area here, probably into the uh, China area is what I'm guessing, at least looking on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Got uh, a little bit of swarming going on there in the Earthquake uh, Department. Also a big time swarm here across the Izu Trench, Volcano Islands area of, of Japan. Quite a few fives stirring up there and some fours. Newer activity up north here along the Japan Trench. An area to watch following all this activity along the plate boundary is going to be here to the west around the Taiwan area. Here's the Izu Trench back over here where the hand is. All that pressure and momentum tends to put the strain here across this area around Taiwan northward here around that subduction zone uh, here across the Japan area. Let me show you guys here on the map. This region right here is probably under quite a bit more strain here following today's earthquake swarm here with a bunch of fours, uh, including a five pointer in there as well. Uh, no main quake. This has just been an ongoing uh, type event here in the last week or so with about 23 earthquakes of various magnitudes. And uh, again, uh, an area to watch is going to be right over here across this area of the subduction zone off the Japan coast and could potentially stir things back up here across the Taiwan area. I was looking at the earthquake activity earlier this year. I remember having a, there was a pretty decent swarm out here. Um, it may have been in the same area earlier this year. I'm trying to think if it was, or maybe it was further down south, but uh, they've seen a number of earthquakes out here uh, that's been adding to the further strain out here. That Well, we've seen some big time swarming out here across Taiwan, right? A bunch of earthquakes, couple hundred earthquakes here in the various magnitudes, including a seven pointer out there. All that activity following some movement out here across the Izu Trench. And then of course up here around the Japan area, uh, we've seen some larger quake activity as well with a 7.1. And that triggered the Japanese government there to put out a mega quake warning for the uh, Kumano Ridge area, which is right here. It's a major subduction zone that's capable of producing uh, a mega quake uh, above an 8.0. And um, I have a feeling here with this renewed activity, we need to keep an eye on this region. It's definitely showing uh, uh, potentially maybe a little bit of sign of uh, some strain right now. Uh, or will be for sure. All right, California area. Got a couple of earthquakes here in the red. Lighten up in the last hour near the Garlock Fault shear zone. Very small microquake activity. As uh, far as 2.5 and above, looks like the latest, a 2.7 up here across the uh, Gorda Plate, the southern end here of the Gorda Plate. Uh, that's going to be uh, the plate boundary there with the Pacific Plate. Some movement down south earlier today as well, above the 2.5 level in our typical zones, it looks like. Across the Death Valley area, a little bit here across the interchange of the Garlock Fault and the San Andreas Fault. Got to watch that there. If that starts to swarm, I think we're in trouble. Uh, continuing down south here, we got a little bit of swarming across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. This is the area that had a 3.4 earthquake last night or early this morning, just after midnight my time. So things are um, they're active. Not uh, elevated to the extent where, you know, we, you know what's going on. But this is uh, definitely seeing a little bit of elevated seismic activity out here. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map here tonight. See what we have. Cascadia trimmer. A zero. Nothing going on there for the epicenters of trimmer activity along the Cascadia for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park having a little bit of earthquake activity earlier. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here from the Yellowstone overview and uh, there's a definitely a handful of earthquakes here one two three four five six probably a good six or seven showing up there on that seismograph and that would probably uh, match that number that's being put out here from the USGS a couple twos in there the largest a 2.4 uh, nothing left or nothing uh, following this activity as you can see it's just a little bit of movement and then it just died down so we'll continue to watch that. Definitely uh, showing up down here across the little west of them as well. A couple other smaller quakes in the mix as well. Those are probably below the 1.0 threshold. 
Uh, the rest of the country out here, pretty quiet. Typical movement out there in the oil fields. Uh, look at this activity down south here, getting some movement across the South America area. With uh, the latest quake down here, looks to be uh, another 4.7 here underneath the San Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina area. This is a Peru Chile trench, 111 miles deep here into that subduction zone. Uh, definitely a swarm of activity out here today. Continue to watch that. Definitely I've seen some elevated movement out there right now. The newest quake looks to be this five pointer out here um, across the uh, West Chile rise. You guys see that earthquake right here? Uh, just off the coast of South America. That should further amplify conditions out here. That could be why we're seeing a bunch of threes and twos in there right now. Uh, across the Caribbean, a 4.3 coming in way up here, right in the middle of the Caribbean plate. That's a little odd. Uh, south of the Dominican Republic. I don't know how historical data is out here. Let's double check that, see what we got. Don't have a lot of earthquake activity out here in terms of historical data. So a little rare earthquake out there in the area. We've been watching a little swarm of activity up here across the Puerto Rico Trench recently. Uh, but that's an odd one. Definitely uh, an odd quake out there. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot uh, further earthquake activity out there across the region. Mediterranean, fairly quiet. Just some older twos out there. A little three-pointer out uh, off the coast here of Morocco area. It looks like it's going to be right, right along the plate boundary. Uh, aside from that, let's see what else we got here across the world. Uh, I definitely want to keep an eye here on the... Uh, northwestern edge here of the philippine plate that's uh, it, it's got to start moving here soon following all of that activity that's a lot of strain here uh, new zealand a couple threes down there let's go ahead and check out uh space weather activity elevated x flare potential remains a decent threat here a 35 percent chance for x flare m flare at 85 c flare around 99 percent chance or so and, uh, man, we got a, a number of sunspots, a number of coronal holes out here as well. Could amplify the conditions here in the coming days uh, once this solar wind stream reaches the Earth in terms of elevated aurora potential. Right now, nothing significant coming this way uh, unless we get some type of major uh, significant CME. Uh, this region right here, center disk, looking like it's separating a little bit right here, not quite as complex as what it had been in the last couple of days, but we'll continue to watch this area uh, also back here. But I think our newer hotspot region is gonna be right here. Super complex sunspot, that's gonna be uh, 3889, right? That thing has a massive uh, area of coverage and uh, quite complex there. 3889 has been a source of a couple different M flares here recently, as you can see there on the chart. It does harbor a beta delta structure but uh it looks like it's more like a beta a gamma delta and i'm sure it's growing uh fairly significantly so that's going to be a hot spot here to watch here in the coming days folks for some uh some x flare activity no major roars in the forecast is noted right here but uh, we'll see what happens as these sunspots continue to evolve and rotate into the earth directed view uh hurricane activity out here not a whole lot going on in the eastern pacific got to watch Raphael out here 120 mile per hour sustained winds with this current hurricane there in the gulf of mexico it is looking more and more likely that this thing will leak a weaken significantly and take a turn due south here and turn into eventually a tropical depression out here across uh, the southern part of the gulf of mexico no threat to land out here uh, for the states. As we look at the numerical model here, we got that hurricane right there spinning in the Gulf of Mexico as we put it into motion. Uh, really surprised it doesn't, well, this model here, at least the GFS model, shown that it may get caught up um, with that low pressure system. We'll have to watch that, see how close those two are. Of course, the closer, the more likely that thing will get pulled up into the states with some extra precipitation but right now not looking likely that we'll see any significant tropical uh, concerns out here across the gulf coast states for now a little insider s system out there across the west coast um look at that 
Another hurricane potential down here. That's a ways out, though. That's on the 19th. We'll have to watch that. Um, but it is showing some type of hurricane out there across the Florida area. Hitting just the tip there of Florida. West Coast getting a, a nice little storm system out here. I would love for this to happen. Look at that massive bomb cyclone out here. Um, that's a huge nor'easter type of storm. A lot of subtropical moisture. A lot of colder air. That's a huge system if that rings true. Um, wow. So we'll have to watch that. Far as... Uh, total accumulated precipitation out here. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'm still not quite 100% back to myself, but I'm trying. Getting there. Uh, accumulated precipitation runs here. Some moisture across the Pacific Northwest is always um, minimal here in California, but we'll take anything we can get right now. Snowfall. Uh, if we check out the total accumulated snowfall out here. Well, it looks like Sierra Nevada Mountains whatnot, a little bit in Colorado. I don't think see anything significant here across the rest of the country, maybe up north into Canada, but... <coughs> Goodness. Uh, hopefully here in the coming days, I will be back to normal, folks. It's just been one of those things. A little bit of swarming out here across the Lohi Seamount as well. Stirring back up after a couple days of quietness. This is a movement here over the last week. About 62 earthquakes of various magnitudes. Uh, prior to today's activity, it was a couple days there uh, since that swarm stopped. It looks like it's starting to kick back up now across the Hawaii area. So we'll definitely watch that. And uh, keep an eye here across the western area of the Filipino plate. Uh, aside from that, folks, that's all I got. I got to get going before I lose my voice. A little bit at a time, right? Getting better, slowly but surely. I feel perfectly fine. It's just... A voice box, something's irritated, I think, in my upper respiratory because of all the coughing I've done here recently uh, from recent bronchitis, I believe, because the kids had it. And it's just a lot of stuff going on out here. I've gotten sick more times this year than I have at any other time in my life. It's Something's going on for sure. Um, all right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. We will catch you guys back out here tomorrow. For the Friday morning update, I can't believe it's Friday already. All the seismograph stations out there, pretty quiet. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Have a good one.